Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to build a full stack block application using MernStack. So MongoDB, Express, React and Node. On the home page we are going to fetch all the posts from our Mongo database and when we click on a specific post then the information about this post will be fetched alongside with the information about the author. So you will learn how to join information from different database collections using Mongoose and Populate function. We have also register and login functionality, so you will learn how to implement authentication to a MERN project using JSON Web Tokens. On top of it, we check that only the author of the post can edit their own posts. So here, for example, I can edit this post because I am the author of this post, but I cannot edit, for example, this one because the author is not me. On the post edit page, we can change title, summary of the post, cover image, and then content of the post. As you can see for the content we are using Rich Editor which allows us to add headers, images, lists and so on. I can change also the image here to for example this one. So as you can see you will learn also how to build this simple upload functionality. And you will learn many other things like how to handle course errors, how to use React context for storing user information, how to use Mongoose and create models, how to handle relationships with NoSQL databases, JSON web tokens for authentication, how to use cookies in a MERN project, some CSS tips and tricks, and much more. The whole project is built from scratch, so there is no starter code or anything, and I tried to make this tutorial super easy to follow, so even if you are a beginner, you shouldn't have any problems with completing this project. As always, all I ask for is that you will smash that like button, and if there's anything specific you want me to build next time, let me know in the comments. And now, without further ado, let's dive into the code. So, as always, we start with an empty directory here in my code editor, and on the right side I have a Chrome browser open with an empty tab, and here we just have a, in another tab just some content for our blog. Uh, but uh, we will focus here first on the code. Um, I have only an empty directory open here, as you can see there are no files inside this directory. And here I will start by creating uh, two directories inside. The first one will be client directory, oops, client for our React app. And the second directory will be for our API, which will be our Express JS app. So uh, let's start with client directory. I will open terminal here, and let's see. We are inside Mern blog directory, but we want to get inside client. So let's start by going inside with cd and client, and now let's install our React app here. So let's do yarn create a React app and a dot, so it will be installed here. Now enter, and it will start installing. All right, so now as you can see, it's installed. So inside the client, we have our uh, React app and API directory is empty for now. So inside our client, we have source and we have all files for our React app that we can now start with yarn start. So let's do this, let's do yarn start, enter, and now our app has uh, opened. So let's open app.js and let's close uh, this uh, files for now and let's hide our terminal. And uh, let's maybe start by removing all of this and let's just leave an empty div. Let's put maybe test here. And let's also clear this app CSS inside. Let's just select everything and let's remove it. Let's go back to app.js and we don't need this logo that is VG so we can remove it as well. Right, so now we see our test here. I will make it a little bigger. And now let's start by putting some uh, HTML structure to our blog. So we, we want to have some kind of logo and then navigation like uh, login register and uh, create the new article. And then underneath we will have uh, the list of all the articles. Right, so um, maybe instead of div, let's put a uh, main as an element here. And uh, then on the top, we want to have a header. Let's put a header. 
inside header we want to have uh, some kind of logo so let's do maybe a tag with class name logo and it will be well the logo will be uh, let's say it will be just my blog and then after logo we want to have some kind of navigation with links like uh, login and uh, register and I think that will be it so uh, now let's start maybe by putting some styles to our header so uh, we have header we have uh, a a tag with class name logo and then we have navigation with two links let's go inside app css and uh, let's do some styling so first maybe let's add some uh, padding on the main element like maybe 10 pixels at least so we'll have some padding from the top and the bottom uh, then I think it would be nice to have uh, the whole content centered so it will be like this so let's say that the max uh, max width will be I don't know let's say 600 pixels 600 pixels and the margin will be then zero auto auto because it should be centered and now let's see if I make it this big yes it is centered if I zoom out oops here zoom out you can see it's centered right maybe I can make it uh, 500 pixels right uh, now let's go and do some header styling for the header as you remember we have two elements the first is logo and then we have navigation with two links so we can do display flex so those two will be next to each other and then we can add the space between so justify content space between and then we that's how we have a space between those right uh, now maybe we can define how the links in inside should look like so let's do a header a tag and uh, well let's remove decoration so let's do text decoration none let's make them uh, almost black let's do a color of um, let's do inherit so to do those will be those will inherit black color that is default but maybe we can change this black color to make it more grayish so inside the body i will do color of let's do free 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 so now it's not pure black it's saying more grayish and uh, i think that would be good maybe we we'll do two 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 all right um now uh, for our logo i'd like it to be bold so let's do header a with class name logo should be font wave of bold yes i think that's uh, much better and now for uh, those links those links are a a uh, tags inside the header nav so let's do header nav and let's put that uh, this will be also display of flex but we'll add some gap of uh, let's say five pixels and uh, maybe even more let's do 15 I think that's that's much better right um, now maybe we can add uh, some margin bottom from the header so let's do margin bottom and let's say maybe 50 pixels so we can have some spacing here from the header to the content that will start somewhere here <coughs> right um, back to app.js and under our header let's now maybe put some uh, content so um let's maybe put a div with class name entries sorry and uh, trees and then div with class name entry and uh, this will be a single entry in our blog right um maybe we don't even need this entry so I, maybe we can start by removing this let's start with an, a single entry inside single entry we will have an image yes and maybe i will just grab an image from here i will copy the image address and i will put it here and uh, well what else do we want to have we need a title so let's use h2s 
and for the title I will put maybe something like this full house uh, battery backup coming later this year and then it would be uh, good to say, to have some kind of a brief entry to brief description of the of the post of of this entry maybe we can call it post and uh, maybe we can grab uh, like this today's special event blah 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 up to this point so i will add a paragraph here and i will put this and we'll add this t on the beginning and uh, well let's see that should work yeah and we have it we have the image we have some text so uh, now let's i will just copy this and i will put it two more times so we'll have uh, three posts with the same images and now let's uh, fix the styling so let's go back to our app css that is here and now um, first we have this uh, div with class name post and uh, what's wrong first uh, this image is too big uh, so I think that we can start by going all the way up and let's go and do that all, all images should have a max width of 100% so um, at the most all images will take all the available all the available space all the width of 100% and max width defined by our main element is this so that's why this element is this big right and the next thing is I would like to have images on the left side and then the title and short description under on the right side and to do this I will go back to app.js and let's see we have image here and then we have h2 and paragraph and those two I will put them inside the separate div uh, maybe with some class name like uh, content or maybe texts and now let's put those two inside and now those uh, other two blog posts and uh, we need to fix them as well so we'll remove them for now and i will just recopy the one that we have just fixed right uh, so image inside each post we have an image and then we have a div with texts with two elements so now inside our app CSS we can do that our div with class and post is a display of type flex yeah um, and now maybe we can change that div post image is uh, much smaller so it's the width of uh, 50 pixels 50 percent sorry and um, that's uh, that's much better uh, let's see if this image is stretched yes I think it is so let's do have auto this didn't help and this is because uh, by default all the children inside the flex are stretched uh, from the top to the bottom so to fix this I will go back and inside the each post I will put uh, each image that she is on the left side I put it inside a separate div so let's create a div with class name image and I'll put the image inside and now we need to fix uh, this with under two posts so I'll put on the second and on the third as well so now inside the each post we have a div with class name image and the image is inside and then we have div with class name texts and those two elements are inside the header and the description right and now it is much better let's go back to app css and let's see we can remove this with uh, 50 percent and uh, yeah now now it's uh, now it's much better i can remove this and now let's see what do we want to do now uh, we have div with uh, inside div post we have div with class name image or was it emg it was image so the image so this is the left side the left div 
and uh, maybe we can make it even smaller. Let's maybe do a width of uh, 40%. Well, it shouldn't be that small. I think that a better way of fixing this would be to instead of using flex, using grid here, because uh, this way we can define the grid columns. So let's do a grid template columns. And this way we can define the first and the second column. So let's do that. Uh, let's say let's start with 50, 50. So let's do one FR, one FR, two columns with the same sizing. And let's add a gap here. So let's do a gap of, let's say 20 pixels. Yes. And now to make the first column smaller, I will do 0 0.8. FR, FR, and the second will be 1.2 FR. Maybe we can make it a uh, little bigger. Let's do 0 0.9 and 1.1. Yes, and I think this will work. Now, uh, the next part is uh, we need to fix this uh, header here. So let's do div uh, post and uh, div text H2. And let's remove all the margins to zero. Yes. Let's make this uh, a little bit smaller. So let's do a font size. Um, let's do two rem and let's see. That's too big. Let's do 1.6 rem. Oops. 1.6 rem. Yes. I think that's better. I will, I will try to zoom out a little bit to see 100%. Yeah. Um, with 100% view, as you can see, it's uh, it's uh, kind of small, but uh, that's okay. Let's make it uh, 1.5. And for desktop, let's actually make it wider. So I would do 700 pixels here. So it will be wider. And uh, the logo, I want the logo to be bigger. So let's do a font size of uh, 1.4 rem. Yes, and maybe even bigger is the 1.5. And now, and uh, the problem is that, uh, as you can see, this logo is not in line with the links, the links should be pulled down a little bit. So for header, let's do align items center. And now they have been pulled down login and register links. Right, but um, back to our posts. Another thing is I would like to have more spacing between the posts. So let's say it will be margin bottom on the post of, uh, well, at least uh, 35 pixels, I guess. Uh, maybe just uh, 30. Yeah, that's, um, that's much better. We can maybe increase the padding from the top. So let's do this. Uh, we're on the main element with 10 pixels on each side. Maybe we can do on the header, we can add the margin top here as well. There's the margin top of uh, let's do 20 pixels. Yeah, so we have some more spacing. Right, let's scroll down here and let's see. Our headers could be a little bit bigger, so let's try with 1.8. Yes, that looks good. Now, uh, one thing I forgot about is uh, we would need to have some kind of more text here between the header and the brief description about uh, the author and the time. So let's go back to our app.js <coughs> and let's see. Here we have a single post. We have texts here and uh, under the header, Let's add a paragraph, maybe with a class name of, maybe with a class name of info. And um, well, here let's put some, let's see how others do it. They put like a bold name and then brighter date. So in this info, let's put a span with class name author and uh, maybe a link with class name author instead. And let's put my name for now. And then let's put maybe a time tag with a date. So do 2023 and uh, January and today is 
six. And let's say it's uh, 1645. So we have now here a user, author and the date. Only in the first one, but we'll fix it uh, in a minute. I will put um, also a class name to this uh, brief description of the post. Let's put the class name here. And um, maybe we can call this one summary. Summary of the post. Right, uh, now I will copy this div text and I will update on other two posts. So copy and paste. And now let's go back to app CSS. Right, and uh, now div that post and uh, let's see. Let's uh, fix the outer link. And um, yeah, let, what was the name of this uh, div? It was info. Paragraph info, paragraph info. And let's see, we have a lot of spacing here that we don't want to, to have. So let's see, I will inspect this element. I'll make this bigger and let's see. Yeah, on this paragraph, we want to have no margin. So it's the margin zero. And now let's change the color to maybe like AAA. So it will be much brighter. And that is too bright, let's do 888. Uh, let's make it smaller, so let's do width font size of 0.7 rem. And uh, let's make it bold, font wave will be bold. Maybe a little bit of margin, so I will do 10 pixels from the top and the bottom and zero on the sides. Maybe that's too big, let's do six pixels from the top and the bottom. Yes, um, that uh, looks good. And um, now, as you can see, we have done. We don't have any spacing here, so I think we can fix it by doing display of type flex and adding some gap of five pixels. So now we have some spacing, maybe more spacing, like ten pixels. Yes, and now for the outer link, let's do the post uh, paragraph info, and then we have a span. Sorry, a tag with class name author let's make color of it of uh, black or almost black so let's do free 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 yes and that's better now let's fix the text underneath so this summary of the post so let's do div with class name post because it's inside this uh, post and then uh, let's do just paragraph summary summary of the post and uh, well, let's do margin. Let's try with zero. Uh, let's do six pixels from the top and the bottom and zero on the sides. Um, that, uh, I think that's too little, let's do 10. And that's better. But now I would like to have more spacing between the lines here. So let's do line half of uh, Let's try with 1.3 rem. Yes, maybe more, let's do 1.5. Yes, I think this will work, let's do 1.4. Yeah, I think this is uh, good enough. Now the next part is I would like to do this login and register page, um, but uh, first we need to fix routing with our React. So uh, let's go to our app.js and for now we have uh, only a home page here but we need uh, to add some routing so i'll open uh, my terminal and in the new tab let's yarn add your react router dom and we are going to use uh, react router dom uh, version 6 so um, let's uh, do this so uh, first maybe as you can see, we have three posts with the same uh, content. Uh, maybe we can get rid of uh, those two and we can leave only one and we can put it as a separate uh, component. So I will cut it from here and I'll create a new component in source. So it's the new file and uh, let's call this one uh, post.js and here let's do just export 
default uh, function post and it will just return and in parentheses I will just paste it and back to app.js and I will, I will do just post and uh, now it has been imported for me and I will add two more posts so it's the post post and that's much better maybe we can do even the same for header so we'll cut it from here and let's do new file header.js and export default function header and return and let's put the header here now let's use it inside our app.js header and it has been imported for me here so that's nice and everything uh, looks really nice so now we can uh, add some routing so let's here start uh, by by putting some routes so let's do routes yes as you can see it has been imported from react router dom if imports are not automatically for you you need to add those lines here but uh, inside the routes what do we want to do um inside uh, routes we want to first have our main route for our home page so let's do route and again it has been imported and this will be index route for our homepage and uh, the element will be this whole main thing so um, let's maybe try to end it here and let's see if we can just put it inside let's put it like this and uh, this didn't work yet but uh, let's see we have routes we have our route here but uh, the last thing that we need to add is we need to go to index.js and our app needs to be inside the browser router so let's do browser router like this and our app needs to be inside so now it works let's go back uh, and yeah and this browser router has been imported for me here let's go back to app.js and we have our we have our uh, first route that is uh, index route let's now add uh, another one let's do route and let's say the next one will be the next will be a path to slash login and the uh, element will be well let's say it will be just a div for now with text login all right uh, so now we have two paths and um, login link doesn't do anything because we need to fix it let's go to header and login should go to slash login let's see now it works but we shouldn't use uh, the default html links instead we should use link from react router dom so let's import this one let's change this one and this one too yes that's much better let's go back if i click login and uh, this doesn't work doesn't work because i need to change ref to two to slash register now let's click now it works and as you can see on login page we have this login text that we added inside app.js we can put here login page so we can see here right <coughs> but uh, the thing is that we want to put all the structure here as well so let's put this and instead of the post we want to put the div with login page all right but now as you can see we are repeating a lot of uh, stuff and the main thing is actually that all the routes will have the main element and the header here we have uh, in index route we have main element and the header and even on the login page we have main element and the header to get rid of this we will define a layout so first first um, the main element and the header we will put it inside the layout component so inside our source let's put new file let's call this one layout.js 
and uh, let's do export default function layout and here just return and we just need here a main element and then the header and uh, then here we want to have our content that will change if it's home page then we will be have posts and if it's login page we will have a form and uh, stuff like this <coughs> so um to do this to do this with our routing we will add here an extra component called outlet like this and it has been imported for me from react router done and now let's go back to app.js and uh, as you can see we have two routes here but now we will let's uh, say that uh, from the login page we will just have uh, only this div and no main and header like this and let's say that for the home page we will have just just one uh, post like this and now we want to put live on our home page so to do this we will put another route here with capital R route that will be path with just slash and the element here will be our layout yes and um, here inside we will put all those two routes like this and now we have layout we could make it uh, shorter maybe like this and now as you can see we have the index route here and route for our login page and those two are inside this main route that has our layout and the content from this element uh, sits inside our outlet that we put inside layout here all right so now let's go back to mjs and let's see um if i click this my block nothing happens because i need to go back to a header and i need to fix this link so let's do link on the logo and it should go to uh, just slash so we can go back to the index page right back to app.js and uh, let's uh, fix the home page back so we can have many posts for now as you can see we have just a single post inside this index page but i think uh, we can create a new component just for home page or index page and uh, we can uh, maybe create a different directory just for pages so let's do pages and uh, i'll create a new file here and let's call this one index page or it could be home page doesn't really matter index page at js and here let's do export default function index page and it will return um empty tag like this and i will just put the three posts inside like this and the last one we could change this one to div or make it empty doesn't really matter for react right <clears throat> um, but now instead of single post we can put um index page here and it has been imported and now we have three posts and let's also fix the login page so uh, let's do pages new file and let's do login page.js and export default function login page this is a function and let's do return and let's put a div in the side login page and now let's use it inside our app.js so instead of this login page inside div we will do login page like this and let's see if it still works yes it does so now maybe we can we have path like this maybe we can do the same thing here we can do just slash login there's no difference here right and uh, yes now i think we can uh, put some content into our login page 
All right, so let's go inside the login page and uh, let's open our login page. And uh, what do you want to have here inside? Let's um, remove this login page from here. And uh, well, inside we need a form and uh, we don't even need this div. We can have just this form and inside form we need an input for username. So let's say we'll have a placeholder that will be username and we need another one for a password. So let's do input type password and the placeholder will be password. And we need the button that will be, that will say login. And uh, that's basically it. So uh, we can actually do almost the same for register page, but uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's copy this. I will copy this and uh, I will create a register page new file register page.js and uh, let's do export default default function register page and let's do return this and for register the button will say register register and all the inputs will be the same let's go to app.js and we need to have a route for register. So as the route path will be slash register and element will be register page, register page. And uh, we need to close the route here. Yes, and let's see, register. We have our register button. So that is really good. I'll make it back a little bigger. All right, and you now it would be much better to fix the styling for login and register. So let's see register page. We have form with action and stuff. Let's do class uh, name of register. And same for login page. We don't need the action. Let's do class name and let's put uh, login. Okay, so we have class name login and class name register on those forms. Let's go back to app CSS. Let's scroll down and let's say that form with login and form register. And um, we want to make them uh, smaller. Let's say max width of uh, 400 pixels and uh, margin zero auto. Uh, yes, and now for the inputs, let's make it for all the inputs, doesn't matter if it's inside the form or not. Uh, let's make that uh, input will be display of type block. And uh, let's add maybe some margin on the bottom of at least five pixels. Let's make it width of 100%. Let's maybe add some uh, padding of five pixels. Let's fix a border of, um, let's maybe do border zero. And we will add some background color of, uh, let's say, DDD. So those will be grayish, maybe AAA, EE, -E, sorry. And we'll add border on the bottom. Let's do a border bottom, one pixel solid, and let's do CCC. Yeah, maybe we can go back to white and we can make the full border. So it's the border one pixel solid. Let's do DDD. Let's add some border radius of uh, 10 pixels. Maybe a little bit less, let's do five. Let's add some more padding on the sides of 10 pixels, maybe less seven. I think this will be, this will be good. Maybe we can make a wider border of Two. Yes, and uh, now one more thing is I would like to, okay, the color is, the default color is okay for focus. Now for the button, let's do button and let's do the default styling for those buttons will be 
almost the same let's do width of 100 percent and display will be block now as you can see the problem is both input even uh, inputs and button is 100 percent but the width is different and this is because when browser by default calculates the width it takes the width that we define it 100 percent and then it adds padding so we have defined this padding on the left and on the right to be uh, five pixels and that's why those inputs are uh, wider than the button but to fix this let's go to the top on our css and let's say that for all elements we'll, we will do uh, sorry box sizing border box and now as you can see the inputs are shorter because now for calculating 100 percent 100 percent of width it includes the padding on the sides so this is what many people most of the people use for calculating the wave and the sizing box sizing border box on all css elements all right but uh, now let's see let's maybe add some uh, some uh, background color on the button let's do background color and now let's maybe do 555 let's remove the border to zero let's do color of the text to white and let's make the border radius of five pixels let's add some padding of at least five pixels and uh, maybe more let's do from the top and the bottom let's do 10 on the side zero oh, i think that's too much let's do let's go back to five maybe seven yeah i think this will work right now let's see we are at register let's see login login looks uh, almost the same maybe we can add some uh, headers here so let's go to register page and let's here inside put h1 register to know where we are and for login page let's put h1 login yeah i think this uh, this will work uh, maybe inside app css let's put that inside form if we have h1 it will be centered so let's do text align center yeah i think that's that's much better right now, now let's go to home page login register yeah everything works so next part it would be nice to be able to register and login so let's go to register and um, if i put something here like test test i would like to be able to register my user so uh, for this we will need some backend so we will put some basic api endpoints to our api so first inside api we need an uh, index.js yes and uh, our whole react app is inside client and now we'll put index.js inside the api and here we will put our express.js app so first we need to install express so um i will open my terminal we are inside marn block that is this main directory we need to go inside api so let's do cd api and now let's uh, install uh, express so let's do yarn add express now i think it's installed let's uh, let's now uh, use express so let's do const express equals require express uh, i can hide my terminal and the sidebar and now let's see let's do const app equals express now we can do app um to listen on port let's say 44000 maybe yes and let's put a test endpoint app get slash and now here we will have an arrow function with uh, request and response and it will respond with json test okay and it will be slash test endpoint right and uh, now let's open terminal and let's do we are inside api let's do node index.js and everything is fine but instead of node i will use nodemon 
If you don't have it, you should install it. You can just Google uh, how to install Nodemon, or you can do yarn global add or install Nodemon. Uh, but Nodemon, what Nodemon does is if I do now uh, Nodemon index.js, every time I change something inside this file, it will restart the app, the our ex express app, so it will reload. Uh, so uh, now I think it's working. So let's do localhost on 4000 slash test. And we have test OK. And now if I do test OK2 on the here on the bottom, as you can see, as you will see, it restarted. So now just in now I just need to do refresh here and I have test OK2. If I don't use Nodemon, let's do node index.js. Uh, I have test OK2, but if I change to test OK3 and I refresh the browser, I still have test OK2 because I need to restart and uh, Nodemon index.js. Now I, now I have test OK3. And with Nodemon, it restarts the app automatically. All right, uh, but now back to our register page, we need to have a slash register endpoint. So let's do slash register. And this will not be a get, but instead it will be post because we want to have send some information with a post request. And uh, now, now let's maybe try to send some post requests from our form, from our React app, so it will respond with a test OK free. So I will hide the terminal. Let's go back to client, our React app, source, app.js. And let's see, we need to go inside our register page. And uh, well, here we want to make a post request from here. So uh, first we need to fix our inputs and button uh, input. So those will use state. So let's do const uh, username and set username equals uh, use state. Default will be empty string. Now same for password. And now for the username, I will do value equals username. Now I can't edit this because I need to add on change here and I will put everything inside separate lines so it will be easier to read. For the on change, we need to add as always for all inputs if we react with the event, we want to do set username with event target value. And now uh, same for the password. Uh, let's do value equals password and on change event set password event target value but I don't need this now I can edit inputs and the values are inside the uh, state so now I can add on click on this button or maybe rather on submit on this form so let's do on submit and let's maybe create a function called uh, function register and uh, it will be called on submit on this form register we will get event here as well and we will run prevent default so we will not try to redirect from this page that is the default behavior of html or all the of the browser so now we want to send a request, post request. So let's use maybe fetch for this. So we don't need to install Axios or other libraries. Fetch, and we want to do a request to localhost 4000. And then we need to add some extra options to fetch. Like uh, first it will be method will be post and then we need to also send some body and inside body we'll send a json that we need to stringify and this json will be just username and 
password like this and um, let's see because this uh, is a json we need to send some headers we'll send headers with content type of application json like this and now i think we have all the data for this request because this is an async function we will do a wait here and we will add async on this function right and now maybe i will open network and let's see if this will this will work so let's hit register and as you can see we get a course error back to our uh, index.js inside api and we get this course error because uh, let's see access to fetch at 4000 from origin localhost uh, 3000 has been blocked because of the course policy and you need to add this header to your backend app and the easiest way to do this to not do response uh, header stuff is to just install let's go to api and let's do yarn add course and this way we can do const course here equals require course and now we can do just up use course like this and now this will this should work let's see network clear this register we get uh, 404 let's see why abjs register page okay we hitting we are hitting 4000 we need to hit 4000 slash register okay let's clear register 200 test okay free right uh, now let's maybe try to respond with the data we send because as you can see we're sending payload with a username and password so let's go to index.js and here let's uh, try to get it so uh, from uh, we want to grab username and password from request body but before we can do this we need to uh, be able to parse this json from the request and to do this we need to add another middleware so let's do app use and here we don't need to install anything we can do just express json parser like this so now let's try maybe to say that our um, request and data was uh, let's put here username and password now if i hit register you can see let's see this didn't change i will refresh test test register payload is okay this is the payload preview we get request data that we defined here and inside this username and password that is both test so uh, yeah now it works so now we want to register this user and put this uh, data somewhere our username and password so to do this i will use uh, mongo database and you can use Mongo database on your local machine, but uh, I I'd rather use uh, online instance because it's easier to set up and to browse the records. So I will go to Mongo Atlas, sign in, and I will log in with my Google account for to create a free project here. All right, so now I am logged in, and I will create a new project and let's call this one mern blog next and uh, create project let's build a database and i will use a free version you can do the same and uh, the region doesn't matter for me i can just uh, create cluster now we need to pick a username and password for this user i will do just blog and uh, let's auto generate this password i will copy i'll put it for here for now I will, okay, I will change it later so you guys cannot use it let's create this user and uh, 
and I think this uh, this will work. Now um, let's see. Where would you like to connect from? Cloud environment or my local environment? I think it's uh, good enough. We will not publish it for now. I will just add my local IP and let's finish and close. Go to databases and our database is going to be prepared here. I will hit uh, connect and I want to have this uh, connect your application so I can grab this connection string and uh, this connection string I will put it here as a comment for now and as you can see we just need to replace this password that I copied here so put this password here and uh, yeah that should work now to connect with our database I will use mongoose because it's the most popular mongo database library so inside our API, let's do yarn add mongoose. And now for every collection inside our database, we need to create models. So inside our API, let's create a new directory for models. So we can create the first model that will be our user model. So let's do new file and let's do user.js. Right, and here we need to grab mongoose. So let's do const mongoose equals require mongoose like this. And now we can create our user model. So first we need a user schema. So let's do const user schema equals, I think it was new and then mongoose schema, yes or we can do like this that will grab schema from mongoose so we can do just new schema and now and uh, what do we need inside user schema we want to have a username that will be just a string and um, but maybe we can define some validation here as well so let's do username will be type of string it will be required and the minimum uh, length will be let's say four and let's say it should be also unique unique true and now password will be type string type string and required as well and um, well that's uh, basically it <coughs> now uh, let's create the model so it's const uh, or maybe we can do yeah, const will be good const uh, the user model equals uh, model that has been imported from mongoose like this we don't need to require mongoose two times i will put model here and the first param here is uh, the name that will be just user and the second is the schema so let's do user schema and now let's just export user model so let's do module exports equals user model right now we can use our user model inside our index.js register so we can register users <coughs> so uh, first we need to connect to our mongoose database so somewhere here on the top of our script let's do mongoose it has been imported connect yes like this and I will put this connection string here inside. And this is async function, so I need to put a wait here. Yes, and uh, let's see what happens now if I hit uh, register. Does it still work? Now we get some uh, we get some errors failed. Let's see. Await is only valid in async functions. <coughs> All right. I guess we can just uh, remove this wait for now because this app post will be uh, run late enough so the database will be already connected. Let's see now if I hit register. Yes, we get 200 and this works. Now let's try to create our user. So let's do user 
and I cannot automatically import my user model. So let's do it here. Const user equals require. And uh, we need to go inside models and then slash user. And then we need to do user and we can just do create parentheses like this, curly brackets. And we just want to put username and the password like this. We can put this as a one liner. And this is an uh, async function. So let's do a wait here. Now it's red because we need to add async here. And this will return our uh, newly created uh, user document. So let's move to const user doc equals this. And maybe we can just uh, respond with JSON user document to see what's inside. Now, if I hit register for test test, let's see what we get. Whoops, we had a lot of, we get ID, we get test test username password. So uh, it has been created. Let's go and see. Let's um, browse collections. We have user, users here, and we have our first user. Let's see if I hit again. Uh, didn't work. And this is because uh, this failed because our user needs username needs to be unique. So that's why this didn't work. To handle this error, we need to grab this inside the try catch. So let's do try and let's put this inside here and let's do catch. And let's put this JSON even here for this will run, this JSON will run if everything is okay. But if something is wrong, let's uh, catch the exception and let's respond with status uh, 400 and the uh, JSON of uh, exception. Do we have a message? Let's, let's maybe do just exception. Now let's uh, clear this, register again, 400, yes. And now we get um, some information about the error. Let's see. Yeah, um, so we see that we get 400 and we get JSON about this exception. So now let's maybe display some information about this error. If we go back to register page, we get this fetch, but even this fetch we can uh, put inside try catch. So let's put it here like this and let's say uh, catch exception. So if something goes wrong, let's do alert. Uh, let's say regis registration failed and uh, try again later. Maybe let's see if we have uh, some information about, yeah, we get that the username is wrong, but let's say just registration failed. We will not say that uh, this username is taken for now. Let's see. Register, nothing happened. Let's see in the console. If I need to refresh, let's do test, test, register. Right, looks like we shouldn't uh, catch the failed request like this. So I will remove this try catch. And uh, instead, we get uh, the response here. Let's do response equals. And let's do just console log response. And let's try register again. We get response 400. And here we can do, and as you can see, response has even this okay false. So we can do if uh, response okay is false, then uh, let's do alert registration failed. And let's try again. Registration failed. Okay. Otherwise, uh, let's uh, let's see. Maybe instead of okay, maybe we can check status. Let's do if status registration status is not two hundred, because the default will be two hundred. Then it will be register registration failed. Yes, and otherwise we can create the. And uh, we can say that the registration succeed. Alert registration successful. Yes, why not? Maybe we can 
change the order of this to if it is 200 then registration su successful otherwise registration failed right so now it will say registration failed but if we do test one and password test one registration is successful right uh, so now let's maybe try a fix so we can log in but the uh, first thing is um, we put the password as a here uh, as a clear text and we shouldn't do this instead we should encrypt the password first with bcrypt so uh, let's do yarn and let's install bcrypt bcrypt.js let's use this one and i will do yarn add bcrypt.js and let's see how to use it just like this bcrypt require so let's go to our uh, index.js and let's require bcrypt like this instead of var let's do const now as you can see to create a, to hash a password we just need to have a salt maybe we can define it ourselves the const salt equals um, something random string maybe like this and then now to encrypt the password we just need to do uh, sorry here hash sync and then our password and the salt so uh, here let's see here we are creating a user with username and password but instead of putting just password to be password we'll do the password will be backcrypt and here we need to do hash sync hash sync and uh, here we need to put uh, the string that will be our password that is just password and the salt is just salt yes uh, this should work now let's uh, remove our user so to refresh and i will delete those two users this one and this one and now let's uh, try to register register a new user test test register registration failed whoops that's not good let's see why let's go to network we get uh, 400 let's see 400 we don't see any information maybe we will do console log on this exception to see what's uh, what happened let's hit register again and let's see we get invalid invalid salt version right so it looks like we just need to generate our salt this way so let's grab this and uh, let's paste it here yes like this generate salt sync and now let's try again register registration successful now let's refresh collection and we get our first user with uh, with a password that is encrypted or hashed yes <clears throat> so now we should be able to to log in so uh, let's go to login and uh, now let's fix our login page so inside pages login page here we need to fix the um, state as well so let's do const username and set username equals use state default will be empty string same with password set password default will be empty string and for the inputs here we need to do value equals username and then uh, on change will be event set username event target value now same for the password value will be password and on change it will be event we have set target set password event target value now i can make put those into separate lines so it'll be easier to for you to read yes right and now we need to add uh, on submit on this uh, form so let's create a function 
called uh, login and let's put this function here we will have an event here as always that we will need to run prevent default on and now uh, how we want to handle this login same we did with registration let's do just fetch HTTP localhost 4000 slash login and then extra options method post and uh, body will be json stringify we want to send the username and password yes and um, we need to send headers content type application json and that's it this is await here and async here and uh, now let's see login um, we don't have an endpoint yet so let's go back to index.js we have register but uh, we don't have a login so uh, i will do up post and um, slash login and here let's do a row function with request and response and now um let's first grab our username and password username and password from request body <clears throat> right and now so uh, how do we want to do this first we need to grab the user with this username and then we want to check if our password uh, is the same as this password that we have inside database but is encrypted so first let's grab the user let's call this one user doc user document from our database and let's do user find and we want to do username is same as username but because those two names are the same we can do just username and we want to find only one so let's do find one and we need to add a wait here and async here right and uh, maybe we can now respond with json with this user doc to see if it works login test test login 200 and we get this our user so now we need to compare our database uh, sorry password so uh, to compare to compare we need to run uh, just something like this and inside hash we need to put user doc that password and this is the password from the database of this user and instead of this weird string we'll put the password and this password is the password from our request and uh, now the result will be true or false so let's put uh, pass okay equals this and let's, let's respond with json and uh, let's put pass okay here now let's test it and uh, let's put test test login and we get true because the password is okay if i add something here let's see we get false because the password is incorrect all right so uh, this part works now the next part is to have some kind of session or a token so now if the password is okay and uh, then user is logged in i will add the logged in comment here otherwise else not logged in so let's maybe respond with status um status 400 and json uh, wrong credentials yes but if we are logged in then we will respond with json web token so um first we need to install json web token so uh, inside our terminal here api let's do yarn add json web token like this enter and now we can uh, use it here so the const jwt equals require json web token yes and now with json web token uh, instead of uh, returning just uh, json with a text we will respond with json but we will put 
uh, we'll send the token. So to create this token with encrypted information about the user, we will do JWT and then sign. This is a function here. And uh, first we need to send the payload. What do we want to have of information inside our token? I want to have a username of my user. So let's do username. I will put username like this and uh, maybe the ID of the user. So let's do ID equals and let's grab this from user doc dot underscore ID. And then, then what else do we want to, uh, we want to have here? Um, the second param for sign is uh, our secret or private key. Let's maybe create another salt here for our JSON web tokens. Let's maybe call this one secret. And our secret will be well, some random string. So let's put it here. And now let's put secret, secret here. And now this is async function as well. So we can either do await here, or maybe we can do then here, or, um, may, or we can uh, do third param as uh, options can be empty. And then we can put a callback here like this, and this will work as well. I think I will use callbacks. And inside this callback, let's see what's uh, inside the definition of this. Uh, in this callback, we get an error if on information, if there's an error, or we get the token if there's no error. And I assume that we don't have any errors, but if we do have an error, I will just throw it here. But otherwise, I will do just respawn JSON and the token. Right, now let's try to log in with uh, test, test, login, and let's see. And we get this weird string in the response. <laughs> now, uh, to have this string and to send it every time we do a request from our app, I will send it as a cookie, not as a JSON back, but as a cookie. So let's do a response cookie and let's say the cookie name will be, uh, let's do this again, cookie. The name will be token and the value will be our token like this. And we'll put the JSON OK, right? Now, if I hit login, let's see, 200, it says OK. But inside headers, let's see, inside the response headers, we get set cookie with this token information here. All right. So now uh, let's go to our login page. And here we have our login. And now the important thing is we want to uh, save this cookie inside our um, React app. To do this, inside our fetch request, we want to add credentials to include. So uh, that way, if we have any cookie, it will be considered as credentials and it will be included to our browser and included in the next requests if we want it, or even send here. Right, so let's uh, now do test and test again. Nothing has changed. Oops, we get a course error. And this course error is because if we send credentials, so as you can see, uh, request headers, we don't see cookies here yet, but uh, let's go to index.js and let's see, we are using this course thing here. And the thing is that if you're using credentials, you need to specify more information. Like, um, let's open course documentation, course. And for credentials, you need to set it to true. So let's do credentials to true. And you need to define the origin. And origin for us will be the host of our React app. So I will copy this. And I will put it like this, HTTP localhost 3000. Maybe without this slash at the end. 
Now let's clear, let's put test test login, and we get 200 back. Response headers, we get the token, and even in the even in the request headers, we are sending this token that we had before. So that is uh, good. Now, maybe instead of doing this uh, response OK, or maybe uh, it's fine with OK. But uh, inside our login page, we can uh, do now something if the login is successful. So uh, first, let's grab the response const response and now if response sorry if response is okay then we want to say login is successful and we want to redirect to the home page so uh, now to redirect to the home page we need to first uh, put it inside state so let's do redirect and set redirect and default will be false <coughs> now if the response is okay we will set redirect to true and this way inside our render part so here where we have return and this all the html here we can do if redirect then we can just return and here we want to use navigate to as you can see this navigate has been imported from reactor of the drum navigate to and let's say we want to navigate to the home page yes so now let's do test and test maybe first we can add if the response is not okay else alert uh, wrong credentials something like this and let's do test one here wrong credentials and if i remove and i try with test test i have been redirected to the index page so now our login and registration works so now the next part is we are logged in so we shouldn't see this login and register thing on the home page right right so this login and register is actually on inside header so let's see uh, it's here header and we have this login and register link instead we should check if we are logged in right but how can we know if we are logged in we have a token inside our cookies but well anyone can have a cookie and set in the browser so we need to check this token if it's valid if this token is valid and we need to create an endpoint for this and uh, inside our index.js inside api let's create an endpoint for this called the uh, profile and it will be a get request this time slash profile and it will just return profile information let's do request response like this and now uh, let's maybe first respond with the cookies response um, with request cookie cookies like this but um, this will not work yet because first we need to add the middleware with a cookie parser so let's do app use and we need to add a cookie parser so let's search how what is the name cookie parser yes cookie parser so let's do yarn add cookie parser and let's add it here so let's do const cookie parser equals require cookie parser like this and i think it's the just cookie parser called uh, like this and now we should be able to read the cookies let's see if this will work um we need to call our slash profile endpoint so inside our header let's maybe do a use effect and uh, here an arrow function and the second param will be empty square parenthesis so this will run every time we mount this uh, component so let's do here fetch and the endpoint will be http localhost 4000 slash profile 
and uh, do we need any params? Uh, yes, we need to send the credentials. So the credentials include, and um, let's see. If I open my console here, let's do network and let's reload. We are running this profile endpoint and we get the response with all the cookies. We are sending this token. So inside our index.js, we can grab the token. So the const token from request cookies. And um, well, now we can uh, try to read this token because as you remember, it's a JWT token with username and password, uh, with username and ID that we can read only if we have this uh, secret. So we can only read it on the backend side. So let's do this. Um, let's do JWT and verify. And now the first is the string, JWT string, that is our token. And next is our secret. So let's put secret here. And then options, I'll put empty object and the callback. I'll put arrow function like this. Uh, first param inside our callback is error. And then we have our information here. So if we have error, I will just throw this uh, error. But if we have the information, let's do response JSON with this uh, information. And I'll get rid of this response JSON here. I will clear this console. Let's reload profile and we get our information. So this is what sits inside our uh, token and this is encrypted. And this sits inside this uh, token text that we have, let's see, it's here. Inside this, we have all this information, the ID, username, and EOT issued at IAT. So issued at is when the token has been created. And um, uh, we will not use it, but uh, it's nice to have in, uh, in case you want to invalidate uh, tokens older than some kind of date. Right, but uh, now we have the information and we can return it. But instead maybe of returning the ID and the test and the username, I don't know, do we need ID and username? Maybe we do. So yeah, let's just respond with the old information we have. So let's go back to our header and uh, let's see. This is fetch, so we can either do await here or we can do then. This time I will do then. And uh, we get a response here. So we'll do our function like this. And um, this is a JSON, so we need to parse it from the response first. JSON, and this is, oops. And this is an async function as well. So we need to either do and await here, or we need to do that then. I will do that then this time. And with the JSON that has been parsed, JSON information, inside this JSON, we will have um, all this information. We can maybe rename it to user info. All right. Inside user info, we have username and ID. Well, uh, we can put the username somewhere here, maybe. So let's put it into state. So let's do username and set username equals use state. Default will be empty string. Why not? Or maybe null. And this way, um, let's see. Uh, here we have navigation and uh, let's say that uh, if we have a username, username, and then we will have parentheses and we will put empty tag like this and we will put a link that will be to create a new article. Link to 
and uh, create new article, something like this, create new post. Uh, but if we don't have username, and then we will have a parenthesis, not div, we will put empty element for react like this. And those two, we will put them here. Now let's see, we have login and register. Um, but here we forgot to put set username. And from this user info, we need to grab user. So user info dot username. And now we have this create new post, but we should have create new post and a logout as well. So uh, I know it can be a link. I can be, let's do this as an A tag for now. Logout. Yes, so we have, uh, if we are logged in, we have logout and create new post. Now, if I refresh, we are still logged in. So it would be nice to maybe first fix this uh, logout functionality. So um, let's add maybe on this uh, a tag on click and it will be logout function that we will define somewhere here. So I'll put some spacing here. Let's do logout function logout. And well, with the logout function, we want to invalidate the cookie. So um, let's do this. We can either reset the cookie on the front end part, or we can do this with the back end. I think it would be better to do this on the back end. So let's do fetch and HTTP localhost 4000 slash logout. And the, the credentials need to be, tr uh, sorry, include here, include, and let's make it a method of post. Right, and now let's go to API index. And now let's do app post slash uh, logout. Here are our function with request and response. And let's see, um, here we just want to respond with cookies, cookie token. And when we are logged in, we are setting the token to the real token, but this time, we will send the token to be just an, sorry, just an empty string and we will send the JSON. Okay. Right, so I will clear this console. If I click logout, we have logout here. Okay. We have headers, response headers, and uh, I think it looks good enough. If I refresh, we are not logged in anymore, so, but uh, Let's uh, log in as the test test. We are logged in. Yes, but we need to refresh. We will fix it later. But the uh, first thing, if I hit logout, I want to invalidate my token and I want to reset this username. So let's do set username to null. This way, if I hit logout, it will refresh this part. Right, but now let's fix if I click login here and hit test test and I click login uh, the header is not updated and uh, another thing is uh, the information about logged in user shouldn't be stored inside a header component but rather it should be inside a context so to fix it I will create a user context so I will put a new file inside source and I will name it uh, user context JS. And inside I will put just const user context equals. And here we'll just do create context from React. And default will be just an empty object. And uh, I will just export this like this export const user context. Yes. And now let's go to our index.js inside our client source where we have our React app. And uh, I'll put this um, user context here. But before I will do this, I will define a prettier provider. So um, let's do const user context provider 
equals and it will be a function maybe we can do just like this function um, provider user context provider and it will just return all the children children like this we will grab the children from this and now let's do export function user context provider and if we put it inside source uh, sorry client source index.js it shouldn't do any harm so let's see maybe we can skip this part and put it inside up here so let's see if we put it here user context provider and let's put all the routes here inside let's refresh this didn't work because well children didn't work let's see children should be probably capital c now it should be small c no it should be capital c like this and capital c okay and we shouldn't um return like this let's maybe instead do div and children like this all right uh the error is because we shouldn't put children like this instead we should put children like this not as a component and um, let's see small c here and small c here and now everything works yeah that was my bad uh now let's see uh, we have this user context provider and here instead of this div we want to do user context dot provider and now value equals empty object for now but we will have a state here so let's do user info and set user info equals use state default will be empty object and we will provide this user info here right so um, we are let's provide user info but let's also provide uh, set user info with our context right now if we go back to our header instead of having user info uh, username inside our state here we will use uh, context here so uh, instead of setting username to the state we will grab the um, set user info from our context so as the const set user info and we will grab it from use context from user context like this and do set user info with user info and here instead of set username we will do set user info to maybe no yes now username is not defined here but we can grab it from uh, the user we can grab user info here and check if we have username username is actually inside the user info so we can do username equals user info dot username but because user info can be sometimes no we will do question mark here right so now we are logged in if i click here we are logged out uh, but uh, back to login if i do test test we will be redirected but this will not be refreshed to refresh this let's go to login page and if the response is okay let's see what we get of the response from the login we get okay uh, instead i would like to have uh, inside the json i would like to have the um, the user id and the username username we have actually here but user id let's go to api index.js and let's see we have a login here and here we are sending json okay instead of this okay i would like to send the id and it's inside user doc dot underscore id and let's send username back why not username like this now login test test login 
and let's see, we get the ID. So that's good. Let's go back to login page. Um, we are doing set redirect to true, but first from the response, we want to parse the JSON and then let's do then. And inside the JSON, we get all this uh, user info. So let's maybe call this one user info here as well. Arrow function because uh, this JSON function is uh, async. And we'll put this redirect here. And uh, before we re redirect, we want to set uh, context information. So let's do const and uh, set user info. And we want to grab it from use context. And here user context like this. And here let's do set user info. And we can just do user info that we get from the JSON. All right. So now uh, if I refresh, I'm logged in, but let's do logout, login again, test, test, login. And we are logged out, uh, we are logged in and we are redirected to the homepage. So that works now. So uh, now we have a working login, redirection and logout functionality. Now, uh, the next important thing is to have this create new post functionality. So let's go to our header first. And uh, let's see, it should be a route on slash create. So if we click on it, it's just white because we don't have any 404 page. Well, we can fix later, but first let's go to app.js and we need to add a route for our create new post page. Uh, so maybe we can actually create the page first. So let's do new file here inside pages and create post.js. And here let's do export default function, create um, let's do the same as the name, create post and let's do return. And it will be a div with, uh, here you create your new post and let's go back to app.js. Let's put a new route here. So let's do route and the, the path, sorry, path, path here will be slash create and the element will be our newly created page. So let's do um, create post. Yes. And let's close this route like this. And now we see here you create your new post. And here we want to put a form for creating a new post. So inside the, each post, we need to have an image. We want to have the title. Uh, we want to have a summary of the post and then we want to have a uh, content like all the texts and uh, stuff. So let's uh, create this form. So here inside, uh, we need to put a form and uh, well, let's see inside this form, we need to have an input for the title and uh, let's add a placeholder. Uh, title whilst we need the uh, we need another input for summary so let's do summary placeholder will be a yeah, summary yes and then we need also the image so let's do input type file yes uh, it's in Swedish but you get uh, the idea it's just a button for picking the file and then we want to have a text area, text area for the rest of the content. But uh, and to create like more rich content, we would like to put headers and more paragraphs and, st and stuff. So uh, I think it would be much better to have like some kind of what you see is what you get editor. And to do this, uh, we will use React uh, Quill. I don't know if I spell it well. Re, react 
Quill. And this is one of the most popular editors. I can show you here, live demo. And this is the editor, so you can put uh, yeah images, you can put uh, headers and stuff. So this is what we are going to use. I will open here. And uh, we are inside the API. Let's go back to uh, Marin block and then CD and let's go to client. And inside our React app, let's yarn add and let's add React Quill. Enter. Okay, now it's installed. So um, now, uh, now let's use it. Instead of this text area, let's see here. Yeah, I will remove this text area. Close this for now. Instead, we will use React Quill like this. And let's see what we will get. Like really weird and huge buttons. And this is because we need to import styling for the editor as well. So let's do import and uh, inside React, React uh, Quill, we need to go to dist distribution and we want to import this snow theme. They have different themes, but I will use this snow. And here we get the, the editor. So we have headers and, uh, and stuff. So uh, by default, you see header one is centered. This is because we said uh, that all the headers inside the forms need to be centered. Let's fix it here. Form H1 should be centered. Instead, let's do form login H1 and form register H1 should be centered. This way, if I put header one, now it's to the left. Right, um, so we have this uh, editor. Uh, the last part is we need a big, beautiful button. So let's put it here, button. And um, let's call this one post um, or maybe create post. Yeah, uh, we would like to have some spacing here between. So maybe I will just put styling directory here. Margin top will be five pixels. Yeah, I think this will this will be good. This will work. Right, so now um, we need to fix state for those two and this for our form. So let's do const and first will be title, set title, use, use state, default will be empty string, same for the summary, summary, set summary, and then uh, the content, so let's do const content, set content, let's do react uh, quill value equals content, yes, and uh, now we can actually add more options here to this React Quill by putting modules. Yeah, and um, to define the modules, I will just copy paste it from uh, the website. They have, um, they have, let's see, modules, modules. Let's see, this is uh, all the modules they have, I think. So let's grab it. Let's do const modules like this. And here I put like this toolbar. Uh, okay, like this. And uh, now, yes, modules equals modules. We can put also formats inside if we want. Yeah, why not? Let's do const formats equals and uh, let's put it like this uh, without this equals here and let's put formats formats sorry formats equals formats and let's see how it looks like now it doesn't work let's see why if I refresh all right now we have it back right so uh, now we have even images and stuff so uh, so that is really nice. Right, but uh, first we have um, now state. 
for those two first inputs. So let's fix it. Maybe first we can grab those modules and formats and those don't need actually to, to be even inside this create post function. So I'll put it here. And now, first the value of the title will be title. Uh, not title like this, title like this. And then we have on change, that will be event. And with this event, we'll do set title, event target value. As always, I will try to put it in different lines so you guys can see it better. And now same for the summary of the post. And the summary will be this part. So this some kind of intro to the post. Uh, so let's do here value equals summary and on change event we've set summary event target value yes and now we have value on this react quill but we need to do on change event set content event target value sorry here we have value let's put in different line this on the next line as well like this and like this here maybe we don't have a target let's see react quill let's do let's see react quill let's search for on a change okay uh, first on change on change we get just the new value so we can do a new value like this and we can do just new value and now this this should work let's see i will refresh test 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 right uh, looks like uh, everything works so uh the last state that we need is for this uh, file so um maybe first i will download a file so let's go to here and I will save this image. And now uh, create new post, v uh, pick a file. And what uh, what should we do? I want to pick this image and upload it to our server or to our API. Uh, let's say that inside the API we'll have a directory with all the uploads. And when I pick this, um, when I pick this uh, image, I want to display it here above, and uh, I want to I want to send it when we create the the post. So I can pick a file here. The only thing that will happen is it will put the file name here, uh, but that's basically it. Uh, but I can put the title um, test summary test. Uh, the content here will be test and then uh, we can either do that this file will be uploaded uh, even before I click this create post or it can be uploaded when I click the create post I think the easier way would be to just uh, upload it when we create the new post and to send all the information all together so um, inside our create post page um actually we we have create post but the rest of the pages are have the page in the name and create post is the only page that doesn't have the page in the name and um, that's maybe not that good but doesn't really matter right but uh, here we have this button create post and this button will submit this form and we want to do that on submit we want to create new post so let's uh, create a function called create new post all right and we will call this function on submit here create new post and as always we'll grab the event and we'll do prevent default on the beginning right when we click this create post what do we want to do Mm, we want to grab this, 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 and the file and send everything to API endpoint, right? Right. So uh, let's maybe start by 
sending here everything to the non-existing endpoint and we will create the endpoint later. So uh, let's say that we will send a, a fetch request to HTTP localhost 4000 for thousand slash uh, create or maybe slash post right and let's add uh, some extra information to this fetch request the method will be post because we want to post a new post post new entry or post new entry blog uh, post new blog entry right and uh, we want to send some kind of information. So let's do body. And here we can do send a JSON, but and because we have this file that we want to save, uh, send, uh, the easier way will be to send all this information, not as a JSON, but as a form data. So uh, here inside our create new post, I will create an object called data and data will be new form data like this and this way we can do data set is it uh, data set uh, data dot set yes and we want to set title to title and we want also data not date data set the summary to summary and also the content data set content to be the content and data set and now the file to be uh, the file from here but how can we access it we need a state for this so let's do const and let's do file and set file use state let's say that default here will be empty string as well uh, here we need to put comment for now same here and uh, let's fix the state for our file we have file here let's say that the value will be file and on change i'll put this into different line we get an event and we want to do set file to maybe not even target value but event target file files like this right um this way i will maybe let's uh, uncomment this body i will comment this fetch and let's see what's inside the file console log this file uh, state let's see Maybe it should be actually files and set files instead because one input can have different many files, sorry. So uh, let's do console log files and let's see, uh, something is wrong here. File is not defined. Here should be files, All right. I will open my console here and uh, let's see if I pick this then it didn't work file to set the value property let's see set files we probably can skip this value files put it like this and now if we pick this file and now if we hit create post we get file list and this is this console log that we get here. So we have uh, files and we have one file here of index zero. And uh, yeah, we get all the information like uh, the name and the size and stuff like this. So we will send this uh, one file here. We will see set a data set file and we'll grab files of index zero because we want to send only one file. Even if you pick many files here, we will just grab the first one right and i will close this for now and uh, now i will un uncomment this and now with this fetch instead of uh, sending json we will send this data like this this form data that we have prepared here and uh, 
Well, let's uh, maybe see how it looks like. So I'll open back my console here. Let's open network. Let's put test test and let's pick a uh, file here and test here. And we get 404 cannot post to slash post because we need to create our new endpoint. So inside our API index.js, we need to create another endpoint for app post request to slash post. Let's do request response uh, arrow function. And here, what do we want to do? And uh, we want to, let's see, payload, we get title, summary, content, and file that is binary file. Um, first, let's say we want to save it, this file, to our uploads directory. So to do this, to grab the file from the request, um, we will need a library that is called Malter, if I spell it correctly. And uh, so let's open, sorry, here, and let's open terminal. I will go back to uh, API. So let's do CD API. And I will install the Malter, so let's do yarn add. Malter. I don't know if I spell it correctly. And uh, yes, and this is how we how we use it. So on the top, uh, we can grab it like this. Malter equals require Malter, and then we can define our our upload, our upload middleware. So uh, I can put it same way they have it, um, but let's uh, rename it to upload middleware, right? So we have our upload middleware and we want to put this uh, upload middleware uh, inside our post. So as you can see, they have upload here and they are putting it like this, upload single file and the name of the form data is avatar for they, for what they have, for us it will be here we will put upload middleware dot single and the data uh, label that we have is just file if we would rename this uh, file to avatar then it will be avatar but for now it's just a file All right and this way in the in the request we will have uh, some more information about the file, like a uh, path to the file inside our uploads and uh, stuff like this. So maybe let's just respond with JSON and all the information from the request file. I think it's uh, this way. No, request files and then file. I think it's like this. Right, uh, now let's see. If I hit create post here, we get 500. So there was some kind of error. Let's see, cannot read property file of undefined. Let's see if I do just request files and let's hit create post again, 200 preview, didn't work. Let's see if I create post, let's, uh, let's add maybe wait here and let's grab the response. Response equals this. And we need to add a sync here as well. Let's try again, create post, nothing happened. Let's clear this, try again, create post, 200, payload. Let's see, method post, it should go to 4000 slash post. All right, let's see. We get something inside our uploads. We get some files, but uh, well, we don't get anything into response. Let's see why. Let's go back to index. We should respond with JSON, but looks like this doesn't work. Let's just maybe refresh. Test, 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 and let's pick a file. This one, I will clear, create post. Looks like this worked, but we don't get any preview 
Let's see, create post. I think this is the preview thing because we don't send any, uh, we are not parsing the response. Let's try to pass the, uh, parse the response. So let's do const, um, let's do just response JSON. Let's parse it like this. And let's do a wait here. And let's put it inside the console log. And now let's see, we should get everything inside console. We get some kind of error. Let's see, network post. Let's try to send again, post 200. Let's go to API, let's see. Let's maybe try to change it to just okay. Create post, then we have okay. If we then replace it to files, request files, to see if we get anything, it's empty. If we just send uh, request file, maybe it should be file, let's send. Okay, then we get the files. So in uh, this files, uh, if we do request file, we get the file name that is this, ends with bbd30. So it's uh, bbd30, so it's this one. But as you can see, the file name we have now is uh, a little odd. So uh, we will rename it first. Uh, so uh, we don't want to have it this way. We want to have maybe at dot JPEG or dot WebP. So it will look like a regular file and we can open it. So we want only to rename it and to add dot WebP that we have on the original file name. So uh, to grab the extension from original file name, maybe first we can grab all this information from, uh, or maybe just original file name. So I will do copy and like this equals, let's grab it from request, uh, request file. And now uh, in the original uh, name, we have this. And let's say we want to take this original name and split it with dots. And we want to grab the last, the last uh, part. So just WebP. So let's save it into parts like this. And um, let's now define extension equals. And this will be the last part. So let's do parts. And here parts length minus one. So now we can do extension. And if I put it like this, create post, let's see, extension WebP. So inside parts, we have two parts. So this is an array. The first part is everything before the dot. And the last part is WebP. And now the thing is that uh, we want to um, rename this file to uploads slash this name and we want to add dot webp on the end. So to rename the file, we want to, uh, we need to use fs library. So the const fs, require fs. fs is from file system. And now we can do fs, move or rename sync. All the path will be this path. So we can grab it from request file path. So let's do rename sync path and the new path uh, will be path plus dot plus extension, right? Now, if I click uh, create post, uh, let's see, we get the extension, but we get also this uh, file name with the dot web P in the, uh, in the file name. Now, and I think that's, that's much better because we can preview files. Right, um, but maybe this new uh, path, we can save it inside a constant. So the constant new path equals uh, this. Whoops, cut from here, put here, new path. Right, so uh, here we are done with the file and now we want to save it, uh, everything from the payload. 
So title, summary, content, and the file that we uploaded, or the link to the file, we want to save it to a database. And for this, we will need, need a new uh, model. So this new new file inside models. Let's call this one uh, post.js. And here we will do, we will grab mongoose. So let's do const mongoose, require mongoose. And first we need schema. So let's do post schema equals, uh, let's grab the schema uh, class from, uh, schema class from mongoose like this. And we will also need model later. Let's do here a new schema and uh, let's define our post schema. So our post needs a title that will be just a string, uh, same with summary, that will be a string as well. And same with the content, that will be a string. And then we have a file or maybe an image, doesn't really matter. Maybe we can call it the cover well string and because this will be a path to a file inside uploads and that's it but there's one more thing we can add we can add another parm here that will be an object with extra options and we will put timestamps to true and this way we will have an extra two columns with updated at and created at and we will know when uh, post has been created. So uh, now let's export it. Uh, let's create a model first. Let's do const post model equals a model function. Uh, the name will be post and the schema will be post schema like this. And now let's do export, sorry, module exports equals uh, post model like this. Now let's go to API index.js. Let's grab the post model. So the const post equals require models post. Let's go down. And now let's see. Now we can, uh, here we are uploading the file. Then let's create the post. The post dot create. And here let's put all the information. So we need to grab uh, from the request first. We want to grab here title summary content, title, title summary, and the uh, content from request uh, body, I guess. Maybe let's first uh, con uh, resp let's respond with this to see if this will work. Summary and content. Let's hit create post. Let's see. Review. Yes, it works. So now we can uh, create the post with uh, title, summary, and content. And as you remember, we have also a cover that is our image. So let's do a cover. And cover will be uh, our new path to the file. So let's do a new path. And like this, let's save it. This is async function. So we need to do a wait here. And we need to do also add async here on this arrow function. And this will return our uh, post document. So it's the post document. So document from our database about this post. Uh, so document from our database. Yes, and let's maybe just uh, respond with JSON with it. So the post doc, let's save it. And let's see if I click uh, create post. It looks like everything just worked. So uh, if everything worked, then maybe we can redirect to the homepage or redirect to the, um, to the post page. So um, let's see if we have those posts inside the database. I'll hit refresh here and we have posts and we have one post with the cover and stuff. 
So now maybe let's uh, print all the posts from the database on, uh, on our homepage. So um, first I will add that uh, if we add the post, it will redirect us to the, um, to the homepage. So um, let's go to create post page. And here we are doing just console log, but instead we don't need the response here. Maybe we do, we will check if the response is okay. And if it is, we want to redirect. To do a redirection, we need to have a state for this. Let's do redirect and set redirect. Default will be false. And here we'll do set redirect to true. And here where we are rendering all the HTML, we will first check if redirect is true. Then we will do navigate to just slash, so to the home page, and we'll return it like this. Right, so I can create another post, test, test, I've got test two, and let's put the same lawn mower again, create post, and I have been redirected to the home page. Uh, those lawn mowers are not from the database yet, but we will fix it now. So let's see, app.js. We have our index page here. And as you can see, our index page is just three uh, posts that are hard coded to the, to the code. So to fix it, we need to do and use context here, uh, sorry, use effect. That will run when we mount or when we, yeah, when we mount our component. So when we mount our homepage, we want to run this function. And we want to grab all the, all the, all the posts. So let's say that uh, when we go to slash post, but this time it will be a get request, not post request, it will be get request. Uh, we don't need any params thing, I think. Let's do const response here, fetch post. Maybe we can do that then. All right, we get a response here. And what do we want to do with the response? So response will be a JSON. And this, um, this JSON that we get off from the response will have all the posts for the homepage. So let's call this posts. And now um, let's maybe just console log the posts. Posts like this. Uh, it shouldn't be JSON like this. It should be JSON that then, that then, because this JSON is the an async function. So we need to run then. And this fetch is also async function. That's why we have that then. All right. Uh, so this should work. We need to add endpoint on get request on slash post. So let's go to API index and let's see. Let's uh, we have post request on slash post, but now we'll add a get request on uh, slash post. And get request is default. That's why we don't need to define the method on the fetch inside our React app. Here we'll have a request and response. And uh, well, we just want to respond with JSON with all the, all the posts. So to do this, let's see, uh, we will use our post model and we want to find, and we want to just find everything. So let's do just find, and uh, let's put it into const posts equals this, but we need to add a wait here because it's an async function. And we need to add async here on our arrow function. And let's just do response JSON with posts. And this will work, but it can be simplified. We can just put it like this and we can get rid of this line. So now if I open my console, let's see, Looks like it uh, something didn't work. Let's open network 
and let's see if I refresh. Let's go back to index page and let's see. Oh, sorry, it shouldn't be slash posts. It should be first localhost 4000 slash post like this. So now console and we get an array of two posts. So we can set it inside our state and we can actually display it here. So let's do const posts set posts equals use state default will be an empty array. And let's do set posts posts from our JSON that we get here. And then here, instead of printing posts like this, we will do posts. If posts length is bigger than zero, then we will do posts map. And with each post we will do, let's do parentheses here. And we will do just posts like this. And let's see, now we should have uh, only two posts. Yes, we do. And this post information is not used by our post component, but we can pass all the properties from post like this. And this way, uh, let's open post. We can grab all the information here. So title, summary, and uh, cover. And what else? Um, we have also content. I don't know if we are going to need this. And that's it. And let's now display all the information. So title, let's put the title here into H2. Title summary, let's put summary here. Summary. And now, as you can see, there is one thing I forgot about our username creator or author and this let's see if i open my network tab and i refresh on slash post we get those posts and we get uh, created that that we can use to display here so let's uh, let's use it it's passed here as well so let's just grab it created at Instead of this time, let's uh, let's put uh, created at. It looks weird for now, but we'll fix it later. Uh, or maybe let's fix it first. Uh, so we have this weird created at that we want to make prettier. The easiest way would be to remove this T and remove this uh, Z and display it. Let's put the space here. Um, but uh, there is a prettier way of doing this. There is a lib called the React Time Ago uh, that I like to use, and it uh, takes the timestamp and it prints like 45 seconds ago or stuff like this. I don't know if it would be better to have a date or to have a five seconds ago. Maybe it would be better with a regular date. So for this, I will install date functions, this one. So uh, let's go to this one. Let's go to a uh, clients. So let's do client, cd client. And now uh, let's do yarn add date fns. And inside date FNS, there is a function called, uh, I think it was uh, format ISO 9075. In, let's import this from date FNS. And this will the format the same format to the same format that databases MySQL is using. So let's uh, do create that here. Let's see if this will work. And uh, no, it did not. Maybe because this function needs a date. So let's do new date and let's put it like this. Now it works. Now, as you can see, it's the same date that uh, MySQL databases uses. So it has uh, this date and then uh, space here and time. They have much more functionality if uh, you would be interested. This is really 
uh, helpful um, library. So we could actually format in different way. So instead of format ISO this, we can grab format function, format, and uh, well, maybe we can use um, the month name like uh, this one. Let's do MMM and maybe the date of the day, uh, day of the month like this. And then uh, maybe the year. So let's do, let's search for year. Let's take the full year like this after comma. And then uh, let's take the time hour from uh, 0 to 23, like this, HH, colon, and then let's do minutes this way. Yeah, and now let's see, let's refresh, didn't work, format, let's see, it takes the date, and then the format, so uh, this should work. Let's see what is wrong, use a uh, lowercase, all right. Now it worked. So we get uh, two posts and uh, the date dates work. But uh, anyway, I think that the format uh, ISO 9075 looks better. So I'll put it back and I will get rid of this uh, formatting. Right, uh, but now uh, the next thing that we need to fix is actually this uh, this username. It shouldn't uh, be my name, but instead it should be my username. Um, but the problem is we are not saving the author ID here. So let's go back to API index.js. And when we post to a slash post, we are creating a new post, but we are not putting author ID here. So uh, let's first go to post model and we need to add author here. And the author, what will be uh, the author? The author will be of type uh, ID. And to do type ID, we will need to do schema types object ID. And because it will be a reference to our users, I will add reference colon and user as a string here, right? And now this way we can go back to API index.js and here we are creating a post. We can add the author and here we need to have the ID of the user. How we can grab the ID? We can grab it from JSON web token that we are sending when we are creating new uh, posts. But let's, uh, let's see if we are doing this. In the create post, we have this uh, fetch, but we need to send credentials include here as well. So we'll send the cookie. And now uh, we can grab the uh, JSON web token cookie here. So uh, same way we did it here, JWT verify, and we get the information. But uh, here inside, after we get this uh, token information, we need to grab the token here as well. So it's the token from request cookies. Uh, yes, this way. Uh, we will put uh, this creation of the post here and even this re response JSON. And we don't need to respond with the info from the, from the cookie. Uh, let's see, uh, here we have some await, so we need to then add async here. And even for uploading the file and renaming the name, well, that doesn't really matter where it, if it's inside here. But after we verified the uh, token, we get the info. Inside this info, we have the ID. So, uh, because it's user info, you can, we can do info, dot id let's see if it's dot id uh, yes it is id will be user doc underscore id so this should work let's try to create uh, another post test free and test let's 
pick this long mower again, test, create post. We have this test three. Let's see inside the database. If I hit refresh here, let's see uh, where we have refresh here, refresh, test three, and we have outer object ID of this. It ends with 097 and uh, my user is 097 ID. So that's correct. Uh, now I will uh, delete other two posts because we don't need them. I will delete this one. So it's deleted and this one without the author. So we have only one post with the author. Uh, but um, if I open my network tab, and uh, let me refresh this post, we sending on, we are getting only one post. And from the author information, we get only ID. But because we added this reference to the user, uh, we can now do something like this post find and we can do populate with user information now if i refresh let's open post it didn't work let's see maybe because we need to put it like this let's refresh no this didn't work let's put it as it was find it to fetch let's see network okay looks like we have Maybe it should be smaller, small u. Sorry, it shouldn't be user, it should be author because this is the property name. Okay, and let's open post. We get one post and now instead of author, we get uh, password and uh, username. And uh, but maybe it would be fine with just username. We don't need to grab and send the password even if it's encrypted. So I guess that uh, here we can define what kind of information we want to select. So I'll try with username, maybe like this. I will hit refresh. Let's see, author, we get ID and we get only username, no passwords. We don't need to uh, show the password in the response, even if those are encrypted and it's not a problem. Right, but uh, now, uh, we have the author here that we can use inside our post, not here, uh, inside our post, inside our client, so inside our React app. We have a post, we have the author here that we can grab, and instead of my full name here, I can do author dot username. So now we have test instead of my name. But if I log out and register with test2 and password test2 register, and now I can log in, test2, test2, login. I will, can create new post, test2, uh, post, uh, test. And um, let's put maybe, let's do the same file, test, create. And test to post, as you can see, it has different author than this one. So uh, yeah, this uh, works. Uh, one more thing is I would like to change the order of the post. The last one should be on the top. So uh, let's go to index.js inside API. And here where we are selecting all the posts, let's, let me put it like this. And now let's add, let's maybe put this populate on the new line as well. Here, let's do, let's add a sort and let's sort by created at minus one. So it will be descending. If I refresh, now we have post two on the top. And um, another thing I would like to add is to limit, limit to 20 latest posts. In case there will be 5,000 posts, we want to only select 20. Right, um, so now we are selecting posts. Uh, let's see, we need to also uh, put the image. So uh, I will create a new post, but first I will grab an image from Unsplash. Or maybe I can uh, put, grab it from here. Um, I will save this image 
and uh, I will copy this and I will put it here. Uh, I'll put test here. Let's put this image from here, test, create, and uh, the image is not used. So let's go back to our client source post. As you can see, the image is hard coded. Instead, we get the image from the uh, cover. So we have this cover here that is not used. Uh, so let's use it here in the source of this image. Let's do cover, but it's not inside our React app. Let's see. You see, this didn't work because uh, image, uh, it's not inside uploads uh, this. It's not inside the, if I open this in the new tab, uh, sorry, I can do maybe, oh, I cannot open this. Uh, this way, it tries to find it in the local host 3000, but it should search in um, local host 4000 instead. So um, instead of doing it like this, I put a string here, HTTP, uh, local host uh, 4000 plus this cover information slash and then so now we have localhost 4000 slash upload slash this. All right. So uh, now let's see if this works. And this didn't work because we don't have an endpoint for this. But how we can create endpoints for all the file names? Uh, we can do something called, uh, let's see. We can serve all the static files from uploads. And to do this, we need to do app use and then uh, express, express static. And then the name of the, um, of the directory. So let's do uh, not public, it should be uploads. And now let's see if I refresh, didn't work. Let's see, I think it should work slash upload slash this. Let's uh, see here. Maybe I will just restart this app. So this doesn't work, 4,000 uploads and this. Let's see if we have this file, uploads, and it should end with A12. We have it here, so it should definitely work. Let's try to put it different way. Let's use app use, and let's do express static and uh, First, we will actually put uh, the slash uh, uploads and then uh, we will put express static, static. And uh, to be sure that everything works, we will put the current directory name and we'll add the slash uploads. And now I hope it this will work. Oh, sorry, this is all right. App use on slash uploads. X not export static should be express static. And now everything works. Yeah, so the problem was only that the uh, unit because we have this project inside the Marin block, that's why we need to add this way that with this directory that we are currently running, add the on uh, slash uploads and we are home. Right, uh, but now let's open our React app and refresh and our images are now working. So the next part is actually so we can open a specific post and see the rest of the content. So um, let's see, um, if we go to app.js and the open index page, we have all the posts here. And we should be able to click on the image and on this title. So the image should be inside a, inside a link. So let's put a link to the link should be to a specific post. So to slash post slash and the ID and the image should go inside and same now for the title title should be 
maybe I can just copy it from here. And the closing link should go here. And uh, the link hasn't been imported for me. So it's the link. Now it's imported. Uh, now it's uh, not that pretty anymore. But we can fix it with app uh, CSS. Let's see. And um, this is some kind of H1. So I guess it's this one takes H2. And uh, so let's do text decoration um, none. Div post div text H2. No, we need to style something else. We need to go to div post div texts and a tag. So all links should be text decoration none. All links inside this div post should be text decoration none and color. Let's do inherit. Yes, that's uh, that's much better. Now uh, let's fix the links. So those links should go to the ID of the specific post. So from here we can grab underscore ID and uh, because when it comes from database, it's underscore ID. And now instead of this, we can do backticks slash post slash and whoops. And then let's put the um, dollar sign and let's put our ID here. Uh, sorry, it should be underscore ID, right? So now, as you can see, if I click, it goes to slash post slash and ID of the post. Right, so now let's, uh, uh, let's define the route for this. So in app.js, we have uh, routes here. Let's define another route, route path. And uh, this should go to slash post slash and then the ID of the post. So let's do colon ID and then element. We don't have an element uh, for now. So um, let's create post page. Let's do new file inside pages, post page.js and then uh, let's do export default uh, post uh, sorry function first post page like this and here just return and uh, as the div and post page here and let's use it so element element equals uh, post page like this, it has been imported for me. Let's close this route. And we have post page here. All right. And we are logged in and everything works. So now let's fix this post page. So we get the ID. And uh, the first thing when we are when this page is mounted, we want to grab the information about this specific post. So let's use effect. And the first uh, param is the arrow function will be in the function that we want to run. And then dependencies, we have no dependencies, empty array, because we want to run this function when our uh, post page component mounts. And now we want to do fetch and we want to fetch to HTTP localhost 4000 slash, let's say post and then slash and the ID of the post. But how we can grab the ID of the post? Uh, there is a function called, I think, use params in React Router, yes. Let's do const params equals use params. And then let's do console log params. And I think, well, let's see, cannot, use params cannot be called inside the callback. Right, not a problem. We can put it outside of the callback. Now let's see if I do inspect console, we have an object of ID and the an ID. So instead of params, we can actually grab ID and we can print it here. So we get only the ID. And now uh, instead of printing console logging this ID, let's put it here. So let's do plus ID. We could do, we can maybe change the backticks. It will be prettier. So let's do dollar and ID. And we want to run then because we want to grab the response and to do the stuff with it. So let's do 
response here. And with this response, we want to do uh, response. We want to transform it to JSON. So let's say that this will respond with JSON. We don't have this endpoint yet, but it will respond. And it will have this uh, post information that we can set to our uh, state here. So let's define it here, const um, post info and set post info. It will be use state. Default will be, let's say null, right? And uh, now uh, let's do set post info and we can set post info that we get from here, right? And uh, now if I refresh, nothing works. Sorry, this should be like this. It should be JSON, then like this. Okay, uh, by accident, I have imported response from Express that I don't need. Right, and uh, now let's see. We have uh, some kind of errors that because we are trying to get slash post slash and then ID that we don't have endpoint for. So I will close client, open API, let's go to index.js, let's scroll to the bottom. I'll remove the spacing from the this thing and the app uh, dot get and here slash post and then slash and then the ID of the post. And then let's do us probably I don't know if we need async, but I will add it here. Async and here request response arrow function like this. I'll fix spacing and let's maybe respond with JSON and uh, empty object. And let's see if this will work. Looks like it does empty object. Yes, that's, that's fine. Let's uh, print the request, the whole request as a JSON. If I refresh, well, this didn't work as it should. Uh, maybe we shouldn't uh, send all the requests. Let's send the request params. And let's see, we get the ID. So we know that inside params, we can grab the ID. Let's grab the ID from request params. And now we don't need to respond with JSON for now. With this ID, we want to fetch the post. So let's do post and let's do find uh, one can we do a find one by ID? Let's try if this will work. Uh, or maybe we can do find, uh, maybe it's find by ID. Yes, find by ID. And we just pass the ID. And this is an async function. So let's do a wait. And we get post document here as a, a response from this find by ID. And when we have post document, we can just do response JSON and we can post document, send it back to our browser. Uh, let's refresh and let's see, and we get all the information about our post. But here again, we get author as just an ID. So instead let's do populate and here, I think it should be author. So now if I refresh, we get author and we get username password we don't want to have username password, I want to only have the username, no password sent back. Uh, let's see, author, only username and the ID. So that is uh, nice. So we are sending the um, post information. Let's go to post page into our React app. And let's see, we have post info that we can print now. So um, let's see. Um, Let's say that if we don't have any post info, sorry, no post info, then we will just return empty string. And this will run only if we have post info. So um, first, let's say we want to print an image. And the source to this image will be backticks, HTTP, localhost 4000 slash uh, and then let's do dollar. And from the post info, we want to grab cover. 
yes, this worked. That's uh, that's really nice. Uh, maybe I will put this image into a div with uh, class name uh, image. Why not? I will put it here and this main div, I will put also class name so we can style it later post page like this. Okay, under the image, we need h1 with the with the title. So let's do post info that title. Let's see. Yeah, and then we just need to print the content post info that content. Yes, but we don't want to print it like this. Instead, we want to print it as HTML. So let's do something like this. And now um, I think we it was um, I think here we need to do dangerously set in HTML and here post info dot uh, content. Sorry, not like this, but rather HTML colon and as an object like this. So this is how it goes. If you have, uh, if you want to want to print HTML from a string, you need to do an empty div that is closed directly in the same, in the opening tag. And you set dangerously set in HTML to an object that includes underscore underscore HTML to be the string that you want to print. And uh, this way it's uh, printed. So let's create another post and um, let's maybe grab this and I will grab this title. I will put it here. I will make it capital here. Let's um, maybe I will use this as a summary and I will save this image to my computer. I will use it now. And now I will put some more content like this. I will put it here. Well, maybe we can add some uh, spacing uh, like this. Um, do we want to have more spacing? Yes, maybe here. And we can probably add some more images. So um, maybe we can grab this image. I will copy this one. And on the, let's say here on the middle. No, we don't have a button for images or do we? No, we don't. Um, this should work. Let's create post. Yes, and we have it. So I can open and we have a lot of content here. Um, but now I think we need to do an edit functionality. But before we will do edit functionality, uh, let's style this a little bit. So uh, first, I will go to app CSS and as you remember, everything sits into div with class name post page. And uh, first I want to style those images to be smaller. So we have post page and we have div with class name image, the div class name image. And let's make it have of uh, max have of uh, 300 pixels. That's why it's, uh, well, it's uh, still quite big. Let's see, it's this big. Let's make it uh, smaller, 200 pixel. Okay, so it should end here. Now let's put um, the same thing, but image inside, so EMG um, should be object uh, fit contain. And here we'll add overflow hidden. Okay, but this should be more centered. So let's start with maybe object uh, position. I think it was center, center. And maybe we need to change it over. And I think now it's okay. Let's maybe change it to only 100 pixels. No, it's not. Let's uh, try to do display flex. Okay, now it worked. So now it's in the middle, as you can see. 
And if I make it even smaller, let's do 50 pixels. And you can see that only the middle of the image is uh, visible, but I will make it uh, bigger so we'll have some kind of image here. So I can go to home page and now in the middle of this should be the logo. So if I click it, yeah, and this worked. And if I click this one, we get a lot of more uh, stuff here. Uh, let's see why we have this amount of space in here. This is because we have empty paragraphs here. Um, well, uh, that's, uh, that's okay. Um, now I think maybe we can add also for styling that uh, the links will look uh, different. So let's do div post page and let's do link and let's do color of um, let's do 333 but it will remain this text decoration to underline to have this underline yeah and um, maybe on the post page i will put the header on the top so and it should be centered let's do div post page and the h1 will be text align center but uh, I will let's go to post page and this h1 let's put it above the image yes I'm I think that's that looks much better yeah uh, sorry I forgot about the time and the outdoor so uh, here let's put the time and here let's do format ISO this import from date functions and here new date and post info created at as and then underneath under the time I want to have uh, div with class name author and um, let's say it will say by and then the username so let's do um, post info dot author dot username like this now we need to do styling for our author and time just go back to app css post page uh, time let's do text align center post page time and let's do display uh, block block yes that's better um here from the h1 maybe we can uh, edit the margins from the top it will be let's say 10 pixels on the sides zero on the bottom 10 pixels yes and maybe on the bottom only five and now for the time let's make it smaller font size of um, 0 0.8 rem and let's make it uh, more grayish or maybe let's make it even smaller as 0.7 and let's make it gray so let's do color of uh, I don't know AA yes and now for the author let's do div post page div author and now let's do text align center and margin bottom of uh, 20 pixels let's see yes I think this will be good uh, I would like to add an a uh, sign at sign so let's see by this author yes and um, let's make it smaller so let's do font size of uh, 0 0.7 ram but let's make it bold like this and uh, i think this uh, this looks good so this is how it looks and uh, mobile it looks good as well and uh, maybe only the home page we need to fix styling for mobiles but uh, yeah let's do this so um for styling here let's see um div with class name post this is the thing that we need to style as you can see we have uh, two columns 90 percent and 110 percent so this one is the right side is 10% bigger than the left side uh, so uh, on mobile I want to put everything under the image so only one column 
So um, how we can do this? Let's add, I will copy this. I will comment this out. I will add another one with only one column. So one FR. And this is how it should look like on mobile. And now I will define a media screen and min width, let's say this. So if the width of the browser is at least 768, then on div post, we will do grid template columns of this. So if I make it wide enough, it will change to this. So that is, so that is really nice. Let's see, this is for mobiles. And if I make it wide enough, it will be like this. Maybe I can make everything a little bit wider, let's say 768, or maybe even wider, let's do uh, 800, why not? Or 960. So it's like this. And if I make it smaller, it will go like this. Maybe it could be even like this, it should be um, two columns. Let's maybe adjust it. I can remove this column from here. And uh, if it's bigger than let's say 600 pixels. So now even this size is uh, mobile, mobile, mobile. And now it's, uh, now it's big enough to have all the, all the space. I don't know, maybe we can do 700. That way, if we make it like this, well, you can adjust it yourself. Right, uh, so um, now I think we need to also make this um, image centered. So let's scroll down here. Here we have the image. Let's maybe do with 100%. Yeah, I think that is better. Now let's see, for example, on this one. Yeah, the image is nicely stretched. Um, so we have this, and uh, let's see here where we have more content. Uh, uh, for the content, I would like to have more spacing between the lines. So uh, div post page, and for all the paragraphs here, maybe let's put the rest of the content inside a specific div. Um, let's put here a class name of uh, content. And now um, div content, uh, sorry, content, all the paragraphs inside, let's do line half of uh, 1.5 rem, maybe 1.6. Yeah, so we have some more, more spacing between lines. That uh, looks much better. Right, uh, I think the last functionality that we need to build is to be able to edit posts. So um, if we, if I am logged in as test two, uh, I sh and I click this post and enter this post, I should be able to click edit button and then see a form similar to this and be able to edit this uh, post. So. Uh, how we can uh, do this. Let's go to post page. And uh, here, first, I need to grab the user info from our context. So the const user info from uh, use context, from um, user context. And now, uh, let's say that uh, under the author, I will see if user uh, info that ID, or maybe I will just print it. Yes, we have it. If user info ID is the same as post info that um, post info that author that underscore ID, and uh, then we will uh, put parentheses here, and I will put a div with a link, edit, edit this post. And um, let's maybe add a class name of edit. So we can style it a little better. And here class name of edit, uh, edit row, why not? Um, and uh, here edit button. 
edit button. So let's quickly style it inside app CSS. Div edit um, edit row uh, text align center and now um, a tag with edit button class name let's make it uh, look like a button um, so let's make uh, let's add background color of uh, I don't know free 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 and the color of uh, white and uh, let's add some padding of uh, 15 pixels a lot of padding and um, well I wonder why this uh, this color that didn't work let's see a class with edit button edit post maybe I will refresh padding 15 pixels let me inspect to see why the styling didn't work edit button okay that's because we get this from the a tag on post page we get different styling so to fix this let's do that let's put the post page here okay and uh, now let's see the padding the padding is okay only the div here looks a little weird because it doesn't uh, right we need to change this button to display inline block yes and we want to do text decoration to none and the padding let's add the 30 pixels on the sides and uh, let's do rounded corners so border radius of five pixels and on this edit row let's add margin bottom of 20 pixels all right uh, now it would be nice to add a pen icon so i will go to hero icons and let's search for edit and uh, this will work copy jsx let's go to post page and edit this post i will put here the icon yeah um let's just style it inside our app css so uh, div or maybe any a tag with svg icon let's make it half of uh, 20 pixels yeah something like this maybe bigger 24 and for this specific button let's make it display to inline uh, flex yes and let's do align items center so everything will be centered and let's add a gap of five pixels between the icon and the text let's make them maybe the icon a little bit smaller yes and i think this uh, and this should work so now when you click on this button we should go to a specific page like this create post but with an id so um let's go to post page and now instead of this a tag we want to change it to link and instead of graph we want to do two and i will put back ticks here so we can uh, put prettier variables and now where do we want to go let's say we will go to edit slash and then id of the post so post info dot underscore id link is not defined it hasn't been imported for me let's try to import this uh, no let's scroll here let's import it ma manually link from uh, react router dom now it's better if i open edit it post it goes to edit slash and then id now we need to define the page for this uh, for this page so let's go to client source pages we have create post now we need edit post so edit post dot js and here export default function edit post and return let's say div with edit post and uh, but we need to add it to our routes js and uh, let's add a route with capital r route path and the path will go to slash edit slash the idea of the post 
and then the element will be edit post and we close the route like this and now we have edit post now the thing is that uh, the form will be actually almost the same as this one so uh, i will just copy it from create post let's see create post and uh, i can copy this state and i can put it to edit post like this and now for the form let's see we have the yeah i can copy the whole return thing and uh, maybe even the redirect so let's go to edit post we don't need this return i'll get this now for the redirect i'll put this here uh, redirect and set redirect uh, empty string as default if we have redirect navigate to just slash uh, we'll have create new post we can change it to update post and we will uh, put this function here or maybe above this redirect thing function update post and uh, it will take an event and as long as event prevent default because this is submit on form right uh, what do we miss here modules and formats right uh, so let's grab it from here formats and uh, modules let's put it here let's see if i remove we should get an image but we don't get it let's see if i remove the formats like this and refresh modules is here oh i don't know if this changes anything this modules thing um but because we have a lot of copy paste here uh, especially for this react quill um, maybe i can put it into a separate uh, separate component so inside source uh, i will create a component called editor.js and here let's do export default default function editor like this and it will just return and two props that we will need value and on change and here we'll put this uh, react quill let's put it like this value will be value and on change we will run on change and for modules uh, i will put uh, this modules and now for edit post let's use this editor that we created yes and let's put uh, on change equals uh, um, that content and the value to be content this way we don't need those modules things and same for create post inside the create post we have those modules and formats i will get rid of this and here for this react quill instead of this i will use uh, my newly created editor and the value will be uh, content and the on change will do set content without parentheses here and this should work now let's go back to edit url here and uh, well let's see now it's everything is a little better edit post we are back here let's see editor and uh, do i need to provide maybe i forgot theme to be snow no this doesn't change anything we have a uh, module so be should be modules let's see now we have Im images and more stuff right uh, so this uh, this now works a little better but back to edit post now uh, when we enter this page edit post we want to grab the id from params so let's do const id from use params and uh, use params is from react router dom 
we can get rid of React Quill from here because we use editor here, component instead. But now let's use a use effect and um, no dependencies here. And here we want to do fetch. We want to fetch information from for this specific post. So let's do HTTP localhost 4000 slash and now the uh, now post and now uh, the ID of the post. So let's do plus ID. Then, uh, then we get a response and um, as the arrow function here with this response, we want to run JSON on this to parse it to JSON. Then we get post info here that we can uh, as the arrow function here. And now from this post info, we can fill uh, all those informations. So let's do set title. And uh, here we can do post info title and set uh, content, post info content, and set summary, post info summary. And um, that's it, I guess. Right. And um, well, we could display the image if we if we want to, mm, but uh, that is not that important. Let's say we will update the image only if we want to. Um, we will pick the image if we only if we want to update the image, or maybe we should display it. Uh, so let's add here another stage for the uh, cover. Set cover use state. Default will be empty string. Um, do we need it to display the image? Maybe we don't. Right, but uh, let me know in the comments if, if you want me to, to add it so I can show you. Right, but uh, we have all the information, but now instead of this create post button, we should have update post, all right? And now this uh, update post, what this function should do. It should uh, do a fetch request to HTTP localhost 4000 and um, slash post. But this time in it will be a method, a method of uh, put. All right. And um, we need to grab all the information from state and create a form data from it. So let's do const data equals new form data. And uh, the same way we did for create post. So I will grab all this and uh, the files can be actually empty. The files can be an empty string. So I will do question mark and dot here in case this is not an array of files. And now let's see, mm, maybe here even I can check if uh, if we have files of zero. If we have files of zero, then we will add a file to the data. And then we will run put uh, for the body of the request will be this date form data that we created. And, um, and let's do a wait here. And we need to add async here. Right. And uh, that way we know if this has been updated. And after we updated, we want to maybe set redirect to true. And uh, let's see, set redirect to true. Let's say it will be false here by default. And now if we have redirect, we will not redirect to the home page, but instead sl to slash post. Let's see what should be the name of it, slash post slash the ID. So I do plus and then the ID that we get from the params. So if I click here, if I update the post, then it will redirect me uh, to the post that I have updated. But first we don't have this uh, put endpoint for slash post. So let's go to API index.js and uh, let's see. Here we have for creating new posts. So when we post to post, 
then we need to add another one when we put to the post. So let's do up put to slash post. Then uh, let's make it async here, request response, because we will need some uh, async functions here. And uh, first, um, we want to check if we have any file first. So if we have request file, uh, but before we can check it, um, we need to check in, we need to add this middleware here. So let's put it here. Sorry, I got like this. And maybe first let's respond with JSON to see how, how this works. Response JSON request file like this and to see if we send something and uh, let's go to edit post let's remove this redirection let's click update post and let's see what we get here and uh, no preview maybe because we need to grab the response first and if response okay and then we will do set redirect to true like this as the update post uh, let's see 200 uh, it was a put request with a lot of payload failed to lower the response data no data found for resource okay let's see um if we let's put uh, file is this let's try again update looks like it's uh, empty but uh, i'll post also test uh, to before and this update post okay now it sends only test for so it looks like that file is empty but if i try to update it let's see i put this thing and now update let's see file is and we get this information right so we can check that if we have request file um then we want to do uh, all the stuff here with the files so i will copy this here maybe we could uh, put it as a as a function so there will be no copy paste but uh, you can reformat this function uh, yourself right uh, if we have request file then we will rename it and then uh, let's say maybe here let new file equals um or maybe here we have this new path maybe we can define it here new path equals empty or maybe let it equal null and here we'll update this new path to be this and this way here later on where we we where we are going to update the post we can check if we have a new path to the file all right but first before we check the check the post we need to send the cookie so let's go back to edit post and we need to uh, include credentials include yes and now uh, we can grab the cookie so let's do const um i think it was token token from a request uh, cookie cookies uh, let's see token from request cookies then let's maybe just copy all of this and let's see but here we were creating a post post create uh, uh let's see we are verifying the cookie and uh, then if we get an error we just throw this error but where if we get the information we need to check that information id so the user id from the token is the same that we get from the um is the same as the author of this so how we can check it we first need to grab the post so let's grab the post const uh, post doc i will comment and uh, the rest for now let's grab it uh, so let's do await post find by 
ID and we need to grab the we need to grab the post ID that we don't have here. So let's go back to edit post and let's see. Let's send it data set ID and let's send let's send it as ID back here and uh, we can grab it from here from request body uh, and let's move it here so we have the ID here so we uh, have now the uh, post doc and now we can check that the user ID that is here is the same that is here so uh, if the post doc um, author is uh, different than the or maybe we can just compare it here uh, let's just do console log or maybe let's put it as a constant uh, is author equals post doc uh, author is the same as uh, info dot id is uh, sorry is author here and uh, let's do response json is author okay and we don't need this now let's see if i hit uh, update we get 200 is author is false so uh, looks like i am not the author of this but i want to check uh, post doc uh, author um right post doc and let me check also info update so inside info i am the id of 8e postdoc author 8e so those values are actually the same the problem is that uh, the, those are the same when we do when we run json on them but before we do this uh, author is actually type of object id and to do a better comparison we need to do json stringify on all of the on those two to have better comparison uh, so let's do stringify on the second info id and now if i hit update post let's see is author is true because info id of the user is 8e and post doc author is also 8e so uh, now i know that it's the correct author so if now i will do if not correct author i will throw an error here uh, invalid author or maybe i can do um throw um you are not the author and i can also hear the response uh, status 400 and uh, json with the same text you are not the author yeah something like this here later we know that we are an author maybe we can skip this throw and i can just return here right but if we are an author what do we want to do we want to update this uh, post document so it's the post document and we want to update it and we can update just like this and um, we need to add a wait because it's an async but before we update uh, we want to also put all the information like title all the information from the request body so title summary in case it's different content and uh, well i think it's all but now uh, i'll put it inside different lines so it will be easier to read but now with the file as you can see uh, we didn't update the file or the cover as it's called in the database but we should update only if we have a new path so if new path then new path um like this but otherwise we don't have new path let's put the same thing that we had before let's do post doc dot cover all right and now let's see um i will refresh so we don't have any file here uh, let's do 
let's put two here uh, I can get rid of all of this let's just respawn JSON with the post doc right and now I will update post and looks like everything worked let's go to edit post let's uncomment this set redirect update post and we have this two here edit as you can see it's open uh, the cover photo is open and box i can pick a different file with the closed box update box update post and now it's closed and let's maybe check if we can add some images so i will pick here the open box but um, here maybe in the middle I will put an image of, uh, I cannot pick uh, WebP images. Okay, I just made it uh, JPEG, so now it should work. Yes, now it works. Yeah, so now we can even include some images. I can even make it uh, bigger, so I will, I will remove this. Oh, sorry, it's not here. I should click first edit, remove this. Add new, let's add large version, let's put it, update post, and now we have even the large version. So uh, let's see, we can create posts, we can edit posts, we can even add images in between. We can create users, we can log in, log out. Um, uh, two more things I would like to fix. First is that uh, for this logout, I would like to have an hand icon, so app CSS. And maybe for all A tags, let's do cursor pointer. So this should work on the logout, yes it does. And also for, I think we have for all the buttons, same thing, cursor should be pointer, right. Um, another thing is I would like to have like a hello and username on the header. So let's do header. And if we have username, let's add a span here. And well, let's say hello uh, and then username, username. Yes, uh, that uh, I think that looks uh, much better. Maybe we don't need this. But that's a cool thing to have. All right, so that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.